Hey guys, it's Darwin, and today I'm finally gonna wash my favorite yet dingy down quilt. All right, so over the years, I've made a bunch of different gear videos and advice videos, but something I've never really dived into and done are how-to videos. And I get questions all the time from people on how to do basic gear maintenance. A lot of the gear that we use on the trail needs maintenance so it lasts longer. And some of that gear can be quite expensive, so maintaining it over time will help it last longer and protect that investment. Now, whether it's doing some serious back flushing and cleaning on a water filter, repairing a hole or a rip in a tent or a pack, or doing something that I am really bad about, and that's washing my down products. So how down works are the feathers inside will fluff up and loft, creating insulation and warmth. Well, over time, the oils and the dirt and the grease and the grime from our skins can suck into the down feathers and make them kind of bunch up and not loft up as well. And something like our sleeping bags or quilts or jackets cannot be as warm as they once were. So after putting about 4,000 miles or 200 nights on my enlightened equipment Enigma, it's not really a 20 degree quilt anymore. It's more like a 35 or 40 degree quilt. And it doesn't keep me as warm as it used to. So it's time to finally wash this bad boy. Now there are a lot of different methods on how to wash down. And the method that I'm gonna show you today is not exactly the best. It's just the one that's worked for me in the past. And it's a pretty basic method. In order to do this wash, you just need a few simple products that you can get from Walmart, a local outfitter, REI or Amazon, and some stuff that you already have in your house, which is a bathtub and a clothes dryer. All right, so the five items that we're gonna need to do the wash today are, number one, a thing of tennis balls, at least two, if not three, a bottle of downwash, and there's a bunch of different ones on the market, but the one that's always worked for me the best is Nick Wax. Your greasy old grimy down product, whether it's a sleeping bag, quilt, or a jacket, a bathtub, and a clothes dryer. That's it just those five items. So uh, without further ado, here we go. Okay, so first off, we're gonna take the quilt and throw it in the tub. The next thing that I like to do is go ahead and pre-wet the quilt. So by turning on the water, getting it kind of warm, and then actually turning on the shower, what we're doing here is pre-wetting the quilt. So because there's so much air that gets trapped in the feathers and creates that loft, it's kind of a pain whenever you go to soak it. So I like to kind of get all the feathers as wet as I possibly can and try to press out some of that air before I start my soak. And one of the methods that I actually use, which is gonna seem kind of goofy, is I actually get inside of the tub and I start to squish it around. So kind of like, squishing grapes for wine, <laughs> I do the same thing with down. So I just kind of let the water run and then just kind of lightly press on the quilt to get that air out. And overall, this is gonna make the soaking and the washing process go a lot easier because you won't have to mess with so much air and trying to get it completely soaked and in the water. Once I feel like I have most of the air out, I'm gonna kind of push that to the side and then I'm going to plug up the tub and start filling back up with nice, clean, warm water. Once I get quite a bit of water in there, the next step is adding some downwash. So again, I like the Nick Wax. There are a lot of different brands on the market. Uh, you can get a brand called Granger, but I've always used Nick Wax on all the stuff that I do. So just kind of slosh it around in there. Make sure you get all the soap out of the bottle. Uh, I even like to put a little bit of water in there, kind of swish it around. As soon as I get all the soap out, I'm going to take my hand and just kind of get some suds going, move the soap around, and get a nice frothy bath for my quilt. I'm gonna grab the quilt, bring it over, and now basically starts the soaking process. So there's a couple different ways that you can do this. Um, most of the time, you're just gonna be kind of moving it around, kind of using your hands like a washing machine, and making sure you're getting all that soap and all that water worked into those feathers and into the actual quilt. But keep in mind that there is still quite a bit of air left in there. As you can see, it's kind of still bubbled up. So you can keep working it with your hand. It's gonna take a while. But one of the things that I've learned to do actually is actually start rolling it like you would a tent or another piece of gear. 
And what this does is it presses out all the air, but it also kind of works in that soap and that water into the down. Now you don't want to do it too hard because some of these materials like the cell nylon are delicate. You can bust a stitch. So don't put too much pressure on it, but definitely roll it and it, it really helps the process. As you can see, the water's starting to get pretty nasty. So we're starting to get some of that grime and grit and and dirt out. Once I feel like I got it all nice and cleaned out, I'm gonna set it over to the side and then start draining my nasty, dingy water. Plug it back up and start filling up with nice, clean, warm water and throw the quilt back in. Now we're basically just going to rinse it. So again, like with getting the air out, I actually get into the tub and I squish it around. If you do it gentle enough, um, I find that this process just kind of goes a little bit quicker. It presses out the air a lot faster and I have never had a problem doing it. So sometimes I have to do this process a couple times depending on how dirty my water is. Usually that first wash will really get all the dirt out and the rinse is really just to get the soap out of the feathers. Now, once I kind of have all that fresh water going to the down, I'm going to drain the tub and then basically repeat the process of squishing all the water out. And again, I'm going to roll the quilt and roll the down like I would a tent to really press out all of that water and get as much water out of the quilt as I possibly can before I go to the dryer. So once I feel like I have most of the water out, I'm going to kind of separate the feathers out of their clumps and then I'm gonna take it to the dryer. So before I throw it in the dryer, I like to kind of prep it. I will pull it out and start again separating those clumps of feathers. So it's normal, those, the feathers are just gonna to clump together. They kind of get sticky and they turn into these little balls of gross feather crap. So if you just kind of break them, break them out a little bit and kind of move them around into the quilt, it just overall is going to help and speed up the drying process. So once you feel like you got it kind of nice and broke up and in a good spot and ready to dry, we're going to toss it in the dryer. Then add our tennis balls, at least two if not three, and then set the dryer to a low heat or delicate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dry it for about an hour for the first dry. And what those tennis balls are going to do is they're going to sit in there and they're going to bounce around and along with the air and the heat that the dryer is putting out those tennis balls are just going to help break up those clumps and get it to start lofting more now once that initial hour is up i'm going to grab it out of the dryer and go ahead and start hand breaking those clumps again really getting all the feathers to move around in the baffles and ready for another drying cycle and then I basically just repeat that process at least three times. Put it in the dryer, let it run its cycle, take it out, break up the clumps, put it back, let those tennis balls work around, fluff that down back up, and then voila, I have a rejuvenated piece of down, and in my case, 20 degrees yet again and ready for the trail. Now, I'll be honest, the first time I ever washed down, I was a little freaked out because I thought that I was gonna ruin the feathers and ruin the piece of gear, but once you do it a couple times and figure out your method, it becomes much easier. And in the long run, it allows your gear to last a lot longer. So what did you think of this first gear maintenance and how to video? Do you want to see me do more of these and turn this into a series? What gear do you want to see me do it on? Leave me something down below and let me know your thoughts. If you found any value in this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. Now I'm going to get out of here because it's freezing cold.